Hello and welcome back. It's Joey Remini from Seeking Balance Australia. And we've just been talking about the importance of developing a strategy plan and looking at the anxious, dizzy, dizzy, anxious patterns and looking at how we do really need to get honest about what we're feeling in order to then create a really honest response to that. So I wanted to follow up because I've had people ask me, you know, what are vestibular exercises? How do I know if I've already started them or tried them and they didn't work? How do I know if they're specific for me? You know, questions like this. And first of all, they are great questions. So thank you for writing them in. And first of all, I'll start by talking a little bit about vestibular exercises. So vestibular is a word that refers to the balance system in the inner ears. And the vestibular system sits beside the hearing and actually it's like its neighbor, so they're not directly connected. And what that means is you could have perfect hearing and zero balance, or you could have perfect balance and zero hearing. So they're side by side, but they're not directly um, interconnected. So our hearing and our vestibular nerve do feed off to the eighth nerve, which is one of the major cranial nerves in our body, sending information to the brain. So vestibular exercises are very special, gentle exercises that are stimulating the vestibular system, so the inner ears. So almost anything you do in life could be a vestibular exercise, including lying on the floor, standing, bending, turning your head. So if you were to hold on to your ears now, okay, so I'll demonstrate that. And if you watch me as I move my head up and down and side to side, every time I move my head, I'm my ears are shifting, the position of my ears are shifting. So all head movements are going to stimulate the balance organs. And for those of you listening to this who've ever experienced acute dizziness or like a sudden change to your ears, when we move the head, we feel worse. You know, we feel vomity and gross and dizzy. And that's because there's been a change to our vestibular environment. And it takes time for the body to resettle that and re-establish balance. And what can happen is we actually feel quite tender and nauseous and so we sort of lock our head and we stop moving our ears and stop moving our head and neck in order to prevent the dizziness, right? So, you know, for, for a small amount of time, whether that, uh, that, that may be quite appropriate, especially if you're in the middle of a big two-hour vomiting spinning exercise, I definitely recommend stillness and that's a great choice, that's a great strategy. However, in day-to-day -day life, it becomes a maladaptive behavior. And that means we're preventing moving the vestibular system or we're preventing moving our head and ears and we're no longer getting the enrichment and the stimulation that our ears actually need in order to be healthy. So vestibular exercises are basically choosing when it's useful to move the body and how much so the movement is graded incrementally so we might start with something that's very simple and gentle and then we will gradually make it more difficult and more challenging so there this can also be you know um, when we're still so as I said lying sitting standing I'm a huge fan of vestibular exercises that require stillness and I mentioned in our last video our balance organs and our balanced brain are actually hopeless at slow movements. So we are much better at doing things like, you know, head checks when we're driving or walking down the supermarket and looking for objects. These are actually quite quick movements. So if we're in the vestibular clinic and we sit people in a rotational chair and move them very abnormally slowly, the brain and the balance organs actually get very confused because it's too slow. So practicing stillness actually becomes very important for people with dizziness and persistent dizziness. So vestibular exercises in a nutshell are any type of movement, whether it be slow or fast, and any type of acceleration, whether it be forwards and backwards or up and down, and of course any type of rotation, whether it be to the left or the right, or even on like a little tilt on a, on a funny angle. So in clinic, we're trying to always make sure the exercises are very gentle. 
So those of you who are listening, if you are doing daily exercises that make you feel worse and make you feel sick and make you feel anxious, then they are not the right exercises for you. It's important that you feel steady, you feel in control, you feel emotionally stable and confident because we need your emotional system on board in order for them to work. Okay, so if you're feeling out of control and dizzy and yuck, get support, get a second opinion or, you know, make sure your therapist you're working with knows how you're feeling and make sure that they help you make it more gentle. And the main reason for that is so we don't overburden the the system with too much movement, you know, and too much of the anxious emotions. So the emotional rehab and the physical rehab go hand in hand. And vestibular exercises need to work with both of those factors. So what can I emotionally cope with today and what can I physically cope with today? So somebody was asking, you know, how do I know if these exercises are specific for me? Well, in in our Rocksteady online program or in my one-to-one vertigo clinic, we're basically looking at where the challenges are in, in each person's life, what things come easily to them, what things are quite difficult, challenging or impossible. And we're also looking at the person's goals. So, you know, sometimes I use this example of an an elderly woman. She was Spanish speaking and we were working very gently, you know, using Spanglish. And we were developing ways for her to build her balance confidence, you know. And her major goal was actually to be able to give people two kisses on the cheeks, you know. So if you travel to Europe or you live in Europe, you'll know it's really normal you, you greet someone and you kiss them on the cheeks. So she just felt too unstable to do that. And that then, of course, had implications for, for loneliness and isolation and feeling inadequate. So her major goal was to be able to greet people and kiss them on either cheek. So we had to create very specific vestibular exercises to help her do those actions. Okay, so that's what we mean by specific for you. So vestibular exercises are not generic. They're not one size fits all. So what we do is we have a general template of ways to approach vestibular rehabilitation or exercises, but it's really up to the individual person and therapist to tailor it very finitely. So as a general rule, if you've just been given generic exercises and you're doing them Uh, once a day, two times a day, four times a day, and you're not feeling any benefit, I would say it's just that they're not specific enough for you. So make sure you're in a program where you can actually update your your exercises at, at least weekly or fortnightly. So I encourage my clients to go back to the drawing board and refresh their program every week or two. And the reason for that is it prevents you from getting stuck It also acknowledges if you're moving forwards, can you make things incrementally more difficult? Or, you know, if you're feeling hormonal or you haven't had enough sleep, do you need to back off a little bit and make them more gentle? Um, So day in, day out, week in, week out, you're responding to the body and you're updating, you're refreshing your vestibular exercises and your program. So I hope that helps answer your question. The vestibular system is incredibly complex and I get so excited by it because I think it's really, really cool. And that's why I loved my university study. Uh, But at the same time, I guess it's frustrating for some of you people because it's like, well, why can't people just fix me? Why isn't there a quick solution to this? And actually, probably one of the reasons is because the vestibular system Um, is so finite and so complex it does require a high amount of individualization your your personal plan will need to be specific for you and none of my clients have the same home program they're all completely individualized nobody has a generic quick fix and then the second thing that makes it tricky is the vestibular system sits right beside the emotional system and they bounce off each other so we have to make sure our, our approach and our home program also respects, honors, and listens to what's happening for us emotionally on that day. So the way we practice on a on a happy, um, energetic day would be very different to how we practice on maybe a, a low, melancholic, freaking out, panic day. So we have to keep moving with the emotions in order to help actually stabilize and, and get that balance. 
So please email me, hit reply to your Vertigo Recovery Starter Kit emails and let me know your questions so I'll answer them on the YouTube channel. So great to be in touch, good question and I'll see you soon. Bye!